Hey everybody, it's Kate Richberg. Sorry I'm a little tardy this morning. I had to restart my system. Uh, as you know, I am not only the talent, but our I'm also the IT person. So thank you for hanging in there with me. But I think that that new, exciting um, uh, intro was worth it, right? So thank you all so much. Oh my gosh, there are so many people watching and I wanted to give a big shout out. We're on a bunch of different social media outlets today, including my Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator outlets, as well as the Great Bead Extravaganza, and of course, everywhere here at beadshop.com. Uh, we've got a couple of things coming up. Um, the uh, Great Bead Extravaganza, stay tuned to your newsletters because that's coming up. I have a kit sitting right over there. I can see it. Uh, a really fun one that's actually been requested from some of you. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, also, I'm coming out to you from uh, my Kate Richburg YouTube channel as well that has all the metalsmithing content. You can see the metalsmithing uh, right over my shoulder. So uh, it's great to have all of you all here for the second episode of this masterclass. So without further ado, let me uh, add uh, my um, board to the stream and let you folks know um, that if uh, you're watching us now on whatever social you're watching. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Um, we really, really appreciate it when you engage with our content because that's the way we get our content out to be lovers like you. And of course, you can find all of the supplies. Whoops, that was the wrong one. Find all of the information on the product and the products from today's broadcast right at beadshop.com, including for this project, the masterclass. The masterclass is an ever evolving project page um, that you folks will find. So as I go through the episodes, um, we'll update it with more photos, uh, more uh, product that I'm using, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So Today, what we're doing is, it's the Advanced Stringing Techniques class. It is the second episode, and we are going to talk about measuring your thread, preparing your thread um, to attach to your centerpieces, and then uh, how to begin stringing. Okay, so let me get this one up there. There we go. Let me look at this, um, if I have any uh, comments, I'm just looking through. All right, well, good. It sounds like all y'all are as excited as I am. So let me jump in. So last episode, we talked about color paletting. We talked about choosing our pieces. Uh, we talked about thread. I want to put thread in the forefront here because the the project that we're going to be stringing is at least I'm going to be stringing and you're going to tailor this to however you want to string it. But let me pull this piece down as a as a for instance. OK, this was one that I did in deep pandemic um, that I did with you step by step. Um, and it's going to be I'm going to do something. I don't know, kind of similar, maybe not similar. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing, right? I mean, I do, but I don't know what I'm doing yet is what I meant to say. But something like this, when you choose your beads or when you choose your centerpiece, see this centerpiece here that I did? I did this with wire. And you can see on the back here, I actually glued this on right here onto this I Ching disc. Then I did some wire weaving, some beads. I did some tassels down here. But the way that this piece evolved was I started from the center and worked my way out. Same way with this piece that I'm going to be working here. I'm going to start at the center. I'm going to work my way out. Now that's to say this piece may not... Um, 
end up in the center, I guess is what I want to say. But we all have to find some kind of starting point. So this is going to be my starting point here. Okay. I don't want you to get caught up in like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Or where is this going to sit? Whatever. Just let it evolve. That's what I'm going to do. And we're going to start letting it evolve today. So here's the thread. I think I might start with I don't know. I think I'm going to start with this burgundy thread here in the center. And so with a piece, let me get myself back up on here. When I measure for thread, and this is the regular Ceylon, and you asked, this is a band. I just cut myself, so I put a Band-Aid on it so it didn't look gross. So I just, it, they're kind of, um, you know, they're black, so they're, they make me feel a little you know, edgy. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, this is the regular Ceylon that I'm using here, right? So I am going to simply put it around my neck here because I can, I'm going to add, I know I'm going to add to this, right? And I don't want really super long pieces of thread. So that I'll have a lot of thread getting tangled and stuff in my way right? So I'm going to start with this length. And this length is about a yard. So let's start with about a yard. Okay. And I'm going to start with one, two, three, and I'm going to double it over. So it's six. Okay. I'm going to cut these here. Now, before I even start stringing with these, I want to show you how I prepare these threads. Okay. So let me get back to this. I'm going to put this board aside for just a second. These are BT dub, and I'll show you uh, at the end. These are our new bumper boards that just launched today. I have both sizes here that I'm going to show you in a minute, but let's work on this piece first, and then I'll show you those at the end. So here's my thread, okay, right here. It's three yards, individual yards. I'm going to use my bench block. One of the, and you'll see what I'm going to do here. One of the things that Helen, and you know that, um, this is kind of, if you watched my first episode, it's kind of an homage to a Bay Area stringing maven, Helen Dietz, who did kind of this style of necklace who influenced so much of us um, when we were stringing back in the day. This is one of the ways that she would prepare her um threads. And no, I didn't get the cut on my hand from doing this. <laughs> it's actually from some mosquito bites because it's crazy. Um, so what Helen used to do was, because she used a lot of different sizes of beads on her things. So she would taper her thread down. And the way that she would do that would be by shredding it with a blade and then stiffening it, right? So I have this safety razor blade. This is the side that's not um, sharp. And what she would do is, see, she would undo it here, right? And she would um, shred the threads. Can you see how I'm doing that? like this. And see how some of the fibers are coming off of the threads? Let me get a little closer to that. And this was, and you can see Janice just put it up. The Northern California Bead Society has a Helen Dietz Remembered page right there. Let me get a little closer to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shred the ends of these threads, and then I'm going to cut them so that they're really thin. So I will be able to string 
a bunch of different kinds of beads on here. Okay, so I'm just using my bench block right here and I'm scraping or pulling that thread underneath my razor blade. You remember this, Janice? You remember this old school? But see here how it's really thinning out. Let me show you. Beaters have also used gum arabic to, um, that's a really old school one to use, gum arabic, it's super sticky and then it dries really hard. But see here how I've got that, that feathered bit right out there. So I'm gonna use my favorite, the zap glue, and I'm gonna make a needle with that. So, and, so Audrey, this is a great question. So doesn't shredding substantially weaken the length of the thread. It doesn't because I'm only working in about three inches. Okay, here. And Lori, it is making it fuzzy, but that's the point. So stick with me. Okay. So now I'm going to lay this down on, uh, people haven't done, uh, I haven't seen anyone do this for like 25 years. So this is an old school technique. So, and it's one that I used a lot, 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 right? So here, see, there's that, that fuzzy end. Here's my zap. Now the gum Arabic, they used to sell it. Maybe like if you find an old school bead store somewhere in the back of beyond or whatever, they still may carry little jars of it. Or I think you can also get it in the art supply store. I haven't really looked for it, but that's what Helen used to use to paint this. So it stiffened the end. Um, but I'm going to use the zap because that's what I've been using. So let me take a bracing drink of coffee here and I'm going to open, I'm going to take the, the lid off of my zap. I'm using the zap because it's um, a gel. It's kind of viscous here. Can you see that as I pour it out there? So it'll, um, it'll grab onto the threads. If I use regular super glue, um, this is a gel super glue. If I use a regular super glue, it's going to um, not have enough um, oomph behind it. I, I don't know how else to say it, but this, the gel really sticks to what I've got going on. Okay, and you'll see that. So now I'm gonna fold this over and I'm gonna make a little puddle of this glue. And now, I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to pull it through a couple of times. And as I do that, you can see that it's flattened. It's going to stiffen out that fuzzy part. Okay. But stick with me. There's still another bit that we have to do here. Let me get another baggie. There we go. And this is dry. This dries really fast. See how stiff that is? While that's finishing, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do the other side of this one. Okay. But see, that's all that I that has come off. Okay. Whoops, it's stuck to my finger. So I don't know. I go like the last two inches or so, right? And I'm just going to shred. There's a book. I don't know. Maybe I should Google gum Arabic for stringing. You know, back in the day when jewelry books and stringing books weren't as readily available, or obviously internet resources weren't as available. Um, this was a technique I also think was in an old, old school um, beading book. I'm going to have to look through my library and see if I can find it. But see how I've taken the plies apart? And I'm going to scrape them. You just kind of have to be 
patient. You could use a little piece. I think what we used to use is a little piece of plexiglass for this. But I shred and shred and shred until my thread kind of breaks away. There we go. This is a good one. Okay. Can you see that there? Yes, I'll mind my fingers. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, this side is 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 not sharp. That's the side that is. So I'll put that aside so I don't freak anyone out. Let's go ahead. I'm going to get that baggie back. This may be still, yeah, I can still get some of that glue right out there. And I'm going to run that zap through that baggie and through the thread onto the thread. Okay, let me get some of the, if there's any extra, it'll come off. Okay, so now, see what I've got here? I've got this, it looks kind of like a feather, right? So what I'm going to do and if at first you don't succeed, you can cut this off and try it again. But I'm going to kind of get my piece here. And I'm going to start, maybe I'll start back here. I'm going to cut some of that off. And I'm going to come down. You know how when we talk about making an angle cut? This is like the original angle cutting. So see that here? Uh, hi, Terry. Here's our old buddy, Terry, who used to work with us at Bead Shop. Terry, you remember those days of, of, um, of Helen Dietz stringing and everything, right? So I'm going to thin this out. So I'll be able to get tiny beads on here. There we go. That's the cut I wanted to see. And then they'll be able to slide onto these heavier threads. Janice asked a really good question that I'm going to answer in just a second, but let me get this. Let me get this trimmed out here. What I want is a really long, thin, the thinnest of thread needles on the end here. See what I'm getting? I'm getting a nice thin. Yeah, Terry remembers we used to use nail polish for this too. That's right. When we were in a pinch, we would use the nail polish. Terry, this is just a note for you. You know our buddy Susan, Susan who has your loom still. She's still working on that loom, still using that loom after all these years, which I thought you'd be tickled about. So take a look at that nice, stiff, really good needle that's on the end. Janice asks a really good question, okay? And she's like, well, Kate, now that we have micro sealon or thinner threads, why not use those thinner threads? Or Lorraine is saying, well, why not use a big eye needle? Well, I'll tell you why. Two reasons. Let me, let me clip this away. This one, the second one I did is a little bit better. Let me um, thin this one out. When... Sometimes when you string a necklace like this, you want to use a smorgasbord of beads, right? You want to use as many different types of beads sometimes as you can. And sometimes there's some disparity between the sizes of the bead hole. So you've got to get them past if you can just get them on your thread, you know that they would work, right? But it's the getting on your thread that's the challenge. 
So if plus a necklace like this is heavy, right? So you want the strength of a heavier thread. There we go. But you also want the ability to get tiny holes, beads with tiny holes on that thread, if that makes sense. Okay. So um, let me zoom out. The other reason why I don't use a needle, and I will use a needle sometimes, and you may not need to do this to all of your threads. You may just want to zap glue them, you know, with a blunt thread, but having this really pointy, nice, skinny bit of thread on the ends, it's really going to help. I want to trim this down just a little bit more. Because you want that transition between where the thread thins out to where it goes a little bit thicker. You want that to be a nice gradual slope. And you might need to practice a couple of times with the ends of your threads. And you can always re-shred and recut a needle here. Okay? So, so let me show you. I'm going to get a pearl. Let me get a small hole pearl here. And then let me get, I'm also going to get a needle. And this is when, you know, you're testing out some beads may not just work, right? They may just be too small or whatever. Okay. So let me get that. Oh, Diane, old school. That's right. Uh, I remember taking a class at the Palo Alto bead shop in the early 90s where the woman teaching it had to shred the thread on a piece of glass. It was very uh helen inspired yes 100 percent, right um so let me let me zoom in a little bit closer so you can see this part so let's compare some thread holes okay and take a look so i've got this pearl here now one of the reasons that i don't use the uh big eye needle all the time, or this flexible eye. Can you see there's the flexible eye? And remember, I'm using regular Ceylon. So if I use this thread and I've doubled it over on the needle, I can't always, see it's stop, it's, it, won't, it won't go through here. See that, because it's doubled. So if I take it out and I put it through on this side, see that tip of the thread is too big to go in there. So let's take a look at my tiny thread. Okay, so it's going in, it's close, but I'm gonna have to cut that down a little bit more. Because once I can get one thread in that hole, I'm home free. So let me see if I can do this. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit more. You know, I could say, no, I'm not going to use these pearls, right? But if there's a way that we can prep our thread so that we can, Here we go. See, that's pretty thin. Let's see if we can get it in there. Let me see 
if I can get the needle on the end and get it through. All we need is like a little bit in there. It's also, it's not quite as stiff as I want it to be, so I may just re-zap it. Let's take a look and see. There we go. See, I've got my thread through there. Now let me grab, I need to grab some, some pliers here. Oh, so close. Come on. It's a little thick right there. I want to give it one more go. But I really want, I mean, I could go down a thread size, but what I really want is the heaviness, the thickness of this thread. And I just have to get this down. We want like one ply. And as I remember back in my memory from back in the day, the thread, this thread was really, was a, a little longer than I'm going here, but let's try this one more time. Oh, it's almost through. Let's see how far we have to go. It's, oh, it's so close. Whoops. And there went that pearl. That pearl doesn't want to be on here. I'm going to give it one more go. And then I'll revisit this for you. Because I know you want to get to the threads. It's a little bit like watching paint dry, but you know, going live, as I say, isn't always for the faint at heart. So I'm not fussed and I know that you aren't either. There we go. One more time, let me grab another. I've got another pearl right here. Well, I'm going to work with this. So um, that fell a little flat, <laughs> didn't it? But this is what I want to tell you about that. Um, this thread that I'm using, this is the Ceylon, the regular. So the thread that we used back in the day, and Cindy was asking about that. Um, whoops. Here we go. There it is. Um, we used the bonded nylon, which is very, very similar. Okay. So you just need to, I, I actually probably need to shred just a little bit more. I might do an after show with this. If anyone wants to stay with me later and we can go over this technique, whoops, that all perfect. But anyway, I'm going to move on because we want to get to the bead portion. But what I would say when we're doing this, when we're shredding this out. See how this has three plies to the thread here. So we wanna get this thread as thin as we can with this single ply. And then we kind of widen it, widen it, widen it out gradually. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more. The zap also may be a little too thick for this. Terry was saying earlier, we used to use nail polish actually back in the day right? So we'll play around with it. Okay. So yeah, and <laughs> Lynn's saying, I'd be reaming that pearl out right now, but there is a solution for that. So let me move forward and then I'll move back with that. Okay. Let me go back to this. All right. So we've got our threads. 
I'm going to continue with this one. I've got this guy here and I'm going to make my regular needles on the ends. And I do have a, because I do have it from back in the day that I still use sometimes is this nail polish. Okay. And so the nail polish as well, let me get these sides. This one and this one. If we're using the nail polish, and I'm going to put this aside, I'm going to dip them and put them aside. What I do is I get the thread, I throw it into that jar of clear nail polish. I put the lid back on. And then I pull that out. Okay. I'm going to give myself one more shred on this side. And I'm going to throw it in the nail polish too. It's like muscle memory coming back at you. See how I'm taking off as much of that as I want. There we go. That's nice and thin. Now I'm going to stick this in the nail polish. I remember that student, JP. Janice is saying back in the old days, we had a student who used hot pink nail polish. I remember that. <laughs> that was funny. So yeah, you can always go down a size of thread, right? But I really want the weight of this regular Ceylon because when I'm stringing, I'm only going to be stringing on a single strand, right? So I want that strand to be pretty sturdy, okay? But you can also mix your threads in here. Like let's say you want to use some of those pearls or something else, right? You could mix in your, yeah, there we go. In your um, project, you could mix fine and um, regular, micro, whatever works. There we go. See, there's that point I want. There we go. And now I'm going to paint this one more time. I think, let me just get this on here. I think the zap was too stiff. I need something that's a little more flexible, which is probably why we used that nail polish back in the day. There we go. This is what that should look like. See that there? All right. Perfect. All right. I'm going to let this sit for a minute. Okay. So <clears throat> let's attach these threads. Let me go back to my beadboard. And even before I attach, let's get this round beadboard back. Now I've got a bin of little beads right here. And I know that somehow I want to attach these threads to the zap needles working pretty good on this side with these seed bead sides. See that? It's going right on. Thank goodness. <laughs> Let me get my pliers there. So I'm going to string up. 
I don't know, maybe an inch of these small beads. When we started necklaces like this, we always, we always started with what Helen called a little ambassador of beads, which was kind of like a little introduction to the rest of the necklace. So here's that little length. So I'm going to just do these on that center strand. Okay. And see for these larger holes, it was that pearl that was super persnickety. I like to go to the one that's the most difficult, but this zap needle is working really nicely for me. That's going through these eight aughts and six aughts really, really well. And that's what this mix is. Okay. So this is about, let me measure it. It's about an inch. I'm going to go to an inch and a half. Okay. Okay. So that's that one. Let's do this one. And again, I don't really have a finished idea in mind. Remember when we were talking about the different ways to tackle design and stuff? We're just going to take this step by step. I have no idea about the length. I have no idea about the clasp. All I know is that I've chosen my bead palette. I like the colors that I've used. And you can go to the page on Bead Shop. I'll also flash all of the beads that I've chosen here. But see, I'm just going to come in. and continue to put these guys on. And this is the mix that I made. See that there? And it has six aughts. <clears throat> it has some of these metal beads. It has eight aughts. And I'm not worrying about which beads I'm using. Whatever. Right? We're almost there. I'm not worried too much about which beads are sitting next to each other. not worried. Okay. And now let's do our third strand. Here's the end that's been that I just stiffened with nail polish. Also works. But again, with these smaller beads with smaller holes, I don't want it doubled over a uh, needle eye. And this is, I don't know, it's about an inch and a half. We'll decide. We might need to put more beads on. We might have to take some beads off. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Almost there. Let me put some smaller ones on. That's not a smaller one. That's a smaller one. And that's a smaller one. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. I need a few more. Now, when we're starting this little starting point, I also am not going to make all of these lengths exactly the same length bead-wise. And I'll show you why. So let me get to like the center here of my, my beads, my thread rather. There we go. This is about the center right here. Okay. And you can see they're not 
quite the same length. Let me get these extras out of the way. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to tie an overhand knot tying all of whoops all of those threads together. Now on this side, I'm going to come in and see how if I tighten it, these strands are going to kind of open up a little bit. And that's what I want. So I'm going to tie that down. Now, what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right, doesn't matter. And Janice is asking me, are the threads even? They're even-ish. Here are the ends, right? <clears throat> Let me pull this out just a little bit so you can get kind of a larger view. Okay. So now <clears throat> with this little ambassador that wants to kind of twist like that, which I like, I'm going to get something to lay it on. This piece right here. <clears throat> and I'm going to say that I like where it sits there. So I'm going to come through with all of these. I don't know what's the front or the back yet either. Okay. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to string on one of these, this one, a whole bunch of beads. Okay. Now stick with me. I didn't say this was going to be a fast moving masterclass, but what we're creating here is we're creating a base of beads to attach other stuff to. Maybe strands that are going to go up around the neck. Maybe strands that are going to go down in tassels. Maybe strands, maybe this will sit on the side. I don't know. But we need to create a little ambassador, a little grouping of beads that are kind of like the base, the base camp for everything else. And this mixture, I've got some metal beads in here, some A dots, a couple of um, six aughts, just a variety of small ish beads. Now that looks like it's long enough. I'm going to turn this whole thing around. Get these threads out of the way. I'm going to thread this whole thing around and see how this is coming. I could tie it up here, but I don't think I want to. See how it's kind of, I like, I like how it's kind of coming to the center of that. So what I'm going to do, let me get in just a little closer so you can see this. I'm going to come in. I'm going to choose a bead. I'm going to choose this bead right there. And I'm going to send this thread through it. Let's see if there's enough room in that hole. There it is. See that tiny little taper. I can grab it with my fingers. And there we have our first little woven space, right? So now I'll do that again back here.
our first little woven segment, I guess, is what I want to say. So these, let me get a few beads on here. And I'm going to weave this in. To that strand on the back. Now I have to make some fast decisions here because I've got over 200 of you watching right now live, which thank you so much for being here and doing this kind of old school. This is definitely not a fast instant gratification kind of project, but I can't stop and contemplate like what my next move is going to be too much, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to, that little bit that I put in there, I'm going to come in and I'm going to pass it through a bead back here, that A dot, slide it up, tighten it. See, so it, it has a little bit of dimension there. Let's turn it over. Good. Good, good. So let's do this last one. Let's get this through. Let me see if there's any questions here. Let me zoom back a little bit. Thanks for letting me know about the, yeah, sometimes it's hard to get the, maybe I should be about right there. Let me know if that's helpful a little bit. Okay, so let's get these in here, a few of these A dots. To start, I want to taper out a little bit, so maybe I'll put a few A dots, maybe four, that's a little shadow right there, an A dot. Then I'll graduate up to the sixes. Go. I'm working on our new bead boards here. This is the round one that I'm using. The surface is really nice, and someone said they've already gotten theirs. Yeah, I'll come up just a little bit more. You can see it's nice. This edge is kind of sealed so your beads don't roll under the board. It's a really nice surface, and I think the color is nice too. I was reading some YouTube comments that you folks were leaving on our videos, which thank you very much for all of those comments and engagement. We really appreciate it. Um, and people were saying they really like this white as a background, which I do too. Okay, so here, let me just come in, see where it kind of connects. It wanna kind of connects, I think, in the bead above that burgundy one. And I want to slide it through if I can. A six ought would be better, but I can get it through there. It's a little out of my focal range, but I think I can see it. Maybe I can't, maybe I just need to, there we go. Don't give up, You're, I'm the boss of these beads. So now let's slide everything down and take a look and see how it's sitting. So that goes there, that goes there. Let me tighten these up, tighten this one up. There we go, I like that. So now what I'm going to do is, oh, I need to put just a few little beads on this one. And then I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to tie all of these in a knot so it's nice and tight. Okay? Then it'll make a little more sense. And just know if you're stringing in this style, you know, you don't have to do the weaving. You know, Whatever you want. But you kind of have to get some beads on here, the front and the back knot them around, tighten them up, and then you pull everything together and all of a sudden 
things are starting to make a little more sense. There we go. That looks good. Again, I still want this loose because I'm going to put stuff underneath there. Okay. In there. Now I'm going to give this one big knot. Okay, I'm going to send all of these through. Tighten that down. Split these threads and tighten. So what I've got here on the front is a nice grouping of beads here. And I've got a nice grouping of beads here. I've got a big knot there that I'm going to cover with this large hold bead, but I want some of these strands, maybe these, I'm going to send back down this way. Okay. And again, I don't know which way is up yet, which way is down, don't know. All I know is that knot is covered there. And I'm going to use, I'm going to take a look at the, the shape of this piece. Okay, this, this, the shape that I've created here. There's a little bit, see where these beads go in right there. I've got a bunch of beads here. Some beads that are larger. This is what I'd call kind of my medium sized beads. These are my larger, some larger beads. These are real large, right? But this mix is, it is, Emma, it's a mix of six. It's actually a mix of sixes and eights. Some little tube beads that I had left over from those vintage African beads. These are the six-aught metal beads. Some from those strands of that vintage brass we were carrying. And some little shadows. Just like a little bead soup in here right? So I want a say something bead that's going to sit like right there. And I feel like this carnelian round maybe is the right one for it. So let's go ahead and string that baby, right? Oh, first I have to string before I string that baby on there. I need to string some small beads. So let me do that. Let me get a few here. Let me get a little bit of the white. I'm also going to use, here's a one of those gooseberry beads. See, look at, there we go. And that's kind of, I don't know, doing the lead up to this big bead. The way you kind of need to think about this is you need to think a little three-dimensionally. See where that skinny thread, how that helps me just get that small semi-precious bead on there? It was just that pearl that was being ornery for me. Let's see, I've got that nice taper and there it goes right on. And this is the strand that has the nail polish on it. So nail polish better than the zap. So see, that round is coming in there so let me put one more a dot on there and let me go through that's why you want to tie this tight but maybe not as super tight as you can get it right because you want a little bit of room there let me see if i can get that see there's that taper grab it and slide it through let me get those out of the way. So see here how 
that little space that I had, that bead just lays perfectly right there. I've got another little space here. Maybe this one goes, yes, see that? That one will want to go right there. Yes, so let's get that one on there. How am I doing on time? I'm doing all right. I hope you folks find this interesting. I don't know, this, I'm feeling like I'm stringing a little slowly, but that's how this is. So <laughs> you can always watch it on replay and fast forward to where you want to see it. But see, I've nestled that bead in, so I'm going to make this strand meet there. I'm going to put maybe one bead more on the bottom and then put that strand through that six aught that's right there. Yeah, this is this is old school stringing. And you're thinking, how big, Kate, can this necklace possibly be? Well, you know, back in the day when we'd go and see Helen, Helen Dietz, who would have these weekly classes in her Berkeley home. People stayed for, came for like, you know, every week for a month or every week for years, whatever. You can make these pieces as large or as small as you want because something like this, an embellished disc like this, would look great on a chain or you know, on just a single strand of beads. We don't have to make a gigantor piece, right? So we'll see how this, where this is gonna go. But see, now I've gotten through that bead. So it's this kind of gooseberry bead coming into this carnelian eight millimeter round, I think. Then that, um, that, uh, faceted oval bead there. Now, if I wanted to make this section a little bit tighter, you can see I've got a little bit of thread there and a little bit of thread there. I'm gonna make these two pieces of thread meet, but I need a few more beads. Okay, so let me get a few more here. And I'm gonna get some eight aughts. I think it's important that you get the eights. Yeah, this taper taper with the nail polish Disregard the zap. The zap is too stiff. This has to be a little pliant, pliable to get these beads through. But we're going to do a little, right, a little bit there. I'm going to put like two, maybe one bead underneath there. And I'm going to send these through this fortunate six aught that happens to be right here. Maybe I'll send it through those two. It wants to go through those two beads. Can you see that? The nail polish that I use, JP, this is the one, I've literally had this for like 20 years. It's the Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. That's it, just clear polish. This, I'm serious, is probably 20 years old. I've had this forever. Okay. So I, I don't know if I get the quick dry. I don't know. Get something that's kind of better quality, though, right? That's a little thicker. That's, anyway, that's what I'm using. I've had that. I probably, this, I probably had this since bead shop days. And you can see it's, there's still plenty in there since bead shop brick and mortar days is what I meant to say. So let me get these two beads up and under here so I can get that thread through. If I need to, I can get my pliers or my tweezers to help me. So there we go. And maybe I'll send this, these two threads, back to the back. Now, I like it. I have one more 
strand here. And you can see this is still a little loosey goosey. It's a little loose up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, string this strand. I'm going to string some small beads and I'm going to kind of weave it through here to tighten everything up. Okay. This one, I still, I think I can use, maybe I can use a needle. Let's add a needle to this. We're not ruling out any tools in our toolbox. So this is the medium flexible eye needle. I wouldn't use the big eye rigid needle. I think you need a needle that will kind of move around a little bit on you. Yeah, and those go through perfectly. I've got a space right there for a space for a bead. Janice is saying that this bead, that this design, it is really true. This is a design that will use up all of those beads that you don't want to restock 100%. You all have, or at least I'm guessing that you do because I do, and I know that we're similar, that you have beads in a little baggie that you've never put back from a project, right? Little beads, a little um, seed beads and stuff. Perfect use for this. Now this is coming in there, so I'm gonna go through this A dot right here. I'm gonna go through two. It wants to go through two. This is our perfect pie disc um, right off our website. One of my favorite ones to use. This might be a little too long. Or let me see if I can tighten this up. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to bring this around and I'm going to send this through. It needs to tighten and go through that bead. Get this back. Sometimes you have to open up the eye of the needle with your awl or whatever, but you can do that. An awl is a really indispensable tool. Yeah, this perfect pie is big. I think it's 50 millimeters or so, 50 or 60 millimeters. It's a nice um, base, but you could use a smaller one. We've got the 30 millimeter discs or the 40 millimeter discs. Those would all work well also. So now I want to make sure that everything is going to sit and not be too floppy all over the place. So that's what this thread is all about. Okay, so I'm going to come back and just thread maybe one A dot, maybe that one. And then I'm going to send this one down that check glass oval as well. There we go. So you can see I'm kind of building a, a pile of beads here. You know, when I first started to string, that's really what led me to wire work was, and I couldn't describe it any better than I wanted to wear a pile of beads. Does that make any sense? So I started to do wire work that like on my discs, on my, embellished discs and things like that because I wanted a bunch of beads all piled up that kind of made a new bead, if that makes sense. So this is kind of that same feeling is you're kind of creating a pile of beads that all work together nicely and create kind of one big visual unit. So I'm coming, I'm going back, I put on a few beads, I'm going back to this, to that um, 
brass bead there and sliding that on. Okay, so now you can really tell you, I have no idea what bead is, you know, what strand is going where on here, right? It's just a bunch of strands kind of floating on this piece. So I am going to, let me open this up. I'm going to bring this strand back up to the top. So, and I'm going to do that by simply weaving. I'm going to put an eight dot bead on there, and then I'm going to go through here. Through those eight dots if I can. Where is this thread coming from? Let me see. There we go. And where's that thread coming from? And now I think I can go back up through That's about as many times as I can go through that check glass bead. Let me tighten up all my strands here, and then we'll take a closer look. I think I'm going to look at this piece as kind of a bale, maybe. My design eye is working. So I might slip some more threads because can you imagine if I'm working, if I was working with more threads than I already am? What a flipping nightmare that might be. I'm just going up a few of these and I'm going to get past this large bicone if I can. Let me see if I can get that through. You don't want to force the thread, so if it doesn't want to go through, pull it back out. Yeah, see, I've already got two strands through there. So let me put some small beads on. And again, thanks, folks, for sticking with me on this. This isn't speed beating, that's for sure. Okay, so let me make some sense out of, I, I want to see where this thread is going. So I just have to walk it through. This is where your all comes in handy. There we go. And this one goes back up through here. And I think, yeah, good. Now I need to find this one. I think it's this back thread. Yeah. There we go. Good. So I've taken up all of the extra 
threads here and I've got just these two I guess I'm calling this the back I guess I'm just going to slide this up well maybe I want one more row let me just put a few of these on just so it's visually equal And we're going to get this necklace to kind of the end point up here. This necklace, this pendant, I don't know, whatever it is going to evolve into. Almost there. These metal six aughts, I'm using the antique copper ones. And if you don't have these, these are a terrific bead because they have such a huge hole. Okay, there we go. And there's a spot here. I, it's time for another big bead. I know it's on the back. It'll probably peek through. But I need something interesting there. Maybe that one. I don't know. Let me see. Um, I keep wanting to put this thing on. The sand cast. This big sand cast. That's, that's just too big. Oh, I know what I want. I want this. The old camera room. Yes, that's exactly what I want. Look at how that just sits perfectly right there. I know I was going to cover that knot. Sorry. I know I was going to cover that knot with that larger hold bead, but I'm not going to. I'm going to, I'll cover it or I'll do something else. So I'm going to come all the way in with all of this stuff and I'm going to tie another knot. I know I still have one strand down there. Let me and that's also why I want heavy thread, right? I want to be able to pull these suckers down so they're nice and tight. Oh, yeah, look at that. I think I'm going to bring this one back to the front. I could just cut it away, but I think I'm going to just string it. I feel like I could use one more something right there. I don't know. What do I want it to be? This is a, I don't know, um, a rondelle, faceted rondelle, which I like. Is that, maybe I want it to be a little darker. Do I want two of those? I don't know. Just put something on, right? Maybe I do want that. Yeah, that looks nice right there. Can you see that? 
Let me get a couple of A dots. So let me tell you something about this piece. If you choose, however you choose to tackle it, it's going to definitely put you outside of your comfort zone, which in my book is a good thing. Okay, because even if it's something, even if you play around with this and you're like, yeah, it's not really it, you can cut it up, try it again in whatever scale you want, scale it up, scale it down, but the learning is going to happen as we engage in creating something that's kind of out of our comfort zone. And I have not made a piece like this in a long time. So to be honest, it's a little out of my comfort zone. See, I've got these two right here. And I'm just going to tie a square knot to tie that off and tie this off again. All right, let me clear all of this business away and then we'll look at it. Okay. Get this over there. Let me get this stuff over there. What I've got thread-wise, two, four, six threads in varying lengths. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of glue onto this knot. And... Um, just a little bit of GS hypo on there. And I'm going to um, just kind of tamp it down like that. And I'm going to get rid of one thread. Now you can use your thread burner for this. So let me do that. Get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of the short ones. I'm going to get rid of these. And the threads in this necklace, you're not going to end with the th same threads that you've begun with, or at least I'm not going to. There we go. So now I just have three left. I'm going to attach some more. But for now, I want all three of these to come together. And I want something that has a big hole that I can get all of these together through. See that? I don't like seeing that knot. So let me get a, a bead. I know what I want. I'm going to get two of these rings. Those are the circles of brass. Circles of bronze, maybe, rings. That'll hide that knot. Yeah, that looks right. And now I'm going to send all of these through this serpentine. There we go. And I'm going to tie everything together. Tie it 
tighten it up. Okay, let me zoom in. So you can see this. So what I've got here, remember I started in the middle with just, I just started with those three little strands, that inch and a half of these mixed beads, tied it, tied it, sent, sent it through the center, sent it up, down, weaving, putting large beads in where I felt large beads went. Here's the back. I still have room here in this bead if I wanted to connect some more strands and come down here and make this a little uh, more substantial, which I may. I don't know. I don't know if that feels thin to me or not. Then I brought my strands. I got rid of some strands and I put all of these three through here. Now this could be a piece. Let's take a look at how this looks on a person. Okay, let me get myself up here. So here is the piece. So now I can start thinking about, will it sit to the side? Sorry, it's hard. I'm not going to look at the camera because I keep putting it on backwards. But will it sit to the side here and come around like this? Whoops. Do I want it here and do beads like a tassel coming down there? Is this one half and then I do the other half with tassel down there? I don't know. Barbara's saying, well, I thought you were covering the whole ring. Well, maybe I am. I don't know. Maybe I want to cover it a little bit more. I'm just not sure yet. So, but this, I think, is a good stopping point. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Let's lay out a few. I, I started a little late, so I'm going to give you some parting thoughts with this, what I'm going to contemplate here. Here's my round board. So I can start to kind of flesh out some ideas. With some of the larger beads that I have. These serpentine beads are great anchor beads. This would also look, look at that. That would look nice hanging through there. So I think I'm going to have to come back and weave a few more and hang that pearl piece from right there. I have another one of these daisies. So maybe I want to offset it. So maybe this will be going up to the back of the necklace. This I'm going to shove in right there. Maybe I'll start this there. Smaller beads, right? So maybe I don't have this. I have this over here on the disc, but maybe I start I counterbalance all of those kind of ambassador kind of beads over here, right? So maybe I just do really small seed beads or something, and this is coming up here. And so this kind of counterbalances it. So it's a little asymmetrical. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this next section off the side of the disc because I want to see, I don't want to cover up too much of that disc. Let me zoom down just a little. So I think that's the next step. I think. I don't know. I'm going to let it simmer. Okay. But this is... Yeah, I'm looking at everybody's pieces. <laughs> yeah, putting the pearl here. I guess that's, I guess that's going to be 
that's going towards the bottom, definitely. So we'll see where it goes from there. So um, I think we've covered it all. Whew. We talked about prepping your thread, including that Helen Dietz way of shredding, adding that nail polish or a stiffener there um, to uh, elongate your threads down for stringing. You can also use your flexible eye needles if need be right here. I've got one of those. I've also used my thread burner to help me reduce those strands and I've glued those knots with the GS hypo. Okay. So we're going to, uh, of course, every first Wednesday of the month, probably through close to the end of the year, we're going to tackle this. So next month in August, it's July already, we're going to do our next installment. It'll be on the first Wednesday. Okay, so I'm not even, <laughs> Lorraine saying, I'm interested in how you're going to close it up and hang it on the neck. Me too, Lorraine. Me too. Um, I don't know. Stay tuned. Who knows what's going to happen, right? But I'm pretty pleased with this effort. Um, the other thing I'm pretty pleased with are these boards. Let me show you. That was this one. They just went live. Oh, look, I've got more beads. I had more tiny beads over there that I didn't even know of. I, I kind of forgot about. So maybe I'll use those to do, to come up here. We'll see. Um, but uh, here's the rectangular board. Let me put all this here. And also remember, I have different thread colors. Maybe I'll go to the green thread next because I want to mix it up. Here's the rectangle board, this size right here. I've been using this one also with projects. You've seen me this one, use this one. I gave Emily that round one, so she's been using it. It's about 16 inches across. So it's 16 by, I'll tell you, 11 here. You can see there's the back. There's nice felt on the back and that kind of velux there on the front. Not too heavy, um, but I'm pretty pleased with them. Um, I'll have to check, Cindy, I think in the description it says where it's made, but my guess is it's overseas made, is my guess. Fairly stiff, but nice and pliant. Um, and so we have them. We're carrying them now. It's something we're going to keep. So you don't have to jump on it right away, but we've got plenty in stock. It's something that we're going to keep stocking. The price point's a good one. They're nice and sturdy. Um... And they are, Lorraine's saying they're nice and soft on the arms as, as you bead. So I am pretty pleased with them. I'm also very happy with this round one that I'm using here. Let me zoom out a little bit and I'll give you the dimensions of that. Okay, so it's this here. You can see that round one. And the round one is at the very widest point is about a foot, a foot by a foot, because it's a circle. Okay, the lid back on my thread burner. So, but it's perfect for a project like this. Okay, so next installment, friends, we're going to work on connecting this second section right here. I may add some beads. I got myself a, um, a strand of, these are the... Um, in vintage finds. Um, they're an eight millimeter round, um, but I think they would look actually really nice with these as well. So we'll see. Peruse our vintage finds section. Um, Janice and I are adding some things to it. We actually have a Zoom meeting coming up this week to look at some new stuff that's been buried back in the vintage finds warehouse, um, which is gonna be kind of fun. Uh, but there's lots of interesting, cool serpentine pieces that you can use uh, to base your piece on. So um, so there it is, Donna, thank you. <laughs> the necklace is going to be epic. So we'll do another installment next month. It's going to be cool. It's going to be great. 
So uh, that's what I've got for you folks today. So let me uh, just put up here uh, a big thank you for watching. You can find all of the information on the project that I've done today, as well as the products from today's bride broadcast right on our website at beadshop.com. If you have any questions, shoot us an email over at info at beadshop.com. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter, folks. Um, J um, Drea just put a, an update on my temperature project um, in the newsletter so you can read all the stats about it because it's officially six months done. I've got six months more to go. It's the the, the midpoint. So um, if you're working on your temperature project, I'd love to see them posted either on our socials over on our Instagram at beadshop.com. Give us a tag over there and we'll share it in our stories or on Facebook uh, group, the bead table, give it a post over there. I'd love to see, or you can just email it right to info at beadshop.com so we can see what you're doing. So thanks again, everybody. I will see you Friday for another great live broadcast. Oh my goodness. So many of you were watching from all over the place today. So I really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much folks. And I will see you live on Friday, 1030 AM Pacific. Thanks all. Bye-bye.